Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. There was once an ancient Greek, a lad named Zenobius, who probably didn't know a putter from the front end of a buggy whip. Yet in the year 154 A.D., he wrote, contests allow no excuses, no more do friendships. And if that doesn't describe the average golf tournament, it comes mighty, mighty close. Today in Springfield, in the white frame house on Maple Street, we find that things haven't changed a great deal in the last 18 centuries. Customs and costumes may have altered slightly, but people go on forever, like this. But, Mother, the whole play depends on it. I told them I'd buy a new dress. I'm sorry, Betty. You had no right to tell them anything like that. Mother, you don't understand. I'm the star. I'm Camille. And how can Camille die in an old dress? You just have to manage, dear. The greatest opportunity of my life. Everyone will be watching me, and I have to die in that old rag. I'll just die. I'm sure you will, dear. Mother, you're not even listening. Why can't I just ask him? Betty, I know it means a great deal to you, but try to think of the rest of us. Your father's having so much trouble with his car. Now, if you ask him for a new dress... <gasps> oh, dear, I told them to be careful. Bud, what are you doing out there? I wasn't doing anything, Mom. Oh, he was, too. Kathy, you and Bud come in here this very minute. Mother, couldn't we explain to him that it's really sort of an investment? Betty, please, not now. Bud, what was that noise? Noise? <laughs> you mean just now? Yes, just now. You mean the noise that sounded like a window breaking? Yes. A window broke. <laughs> <laughs> Bud, which window and who broke it? It was the garage window. And a rock broke it. Mother, they've ruined everything. Now I'll never get the dress. What did we do? You broke a window, that's what. And Father will be all upset. I didn't break a window. Kathy broke it. I did not. You broke it just as much as I did. I didn't even touch the rock. Well, it was your golf club, and you told me what to do. I did not. You certainly did. I certainly didn't. Children, please. Will your father be home soon? He's home now. He is? Oh, dear. Kathy, don't you say anything to your father until I've had a chance to say... Yes, Jim? I'm home. Uh, we're in the kitchen, dear. <laughs> he would have let me have the dress. I know he would. Now he never will, and it's all your fault. Mine? Yes, yours. You and that... that junior grade Frankenstein. <laughs> Betty, please, I will not have you... Well. Oh, hello, dear. What's going on in here? Hello, Father. Hi, Dad. Hello, Daddy. How do you do, Clara, Lou, and Em? <laughs> Hi, honey. Hello, dear. As I said before, why the kitchen convention? Uh, you're home a little early, aren't you, dear? Yes, we, uh, we finished a little earlier than usual this afternoon. What's the matter with the kids? They look as though they... Dinner won't be ready for half an hour, Jim. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind. I said... So many things came up this afternoon. I've been busy trying to get them straightened out. Margaret. Yes, dear? What happened? Uh, what do you mean, dear? I'm being steered away from something. What is it? Daddy. I should have known. <laughs> All right, Kathy, whose window is it this time? Ours, the one in the garage. Well, that's a novelty. I guess it was my fault, too, Dad. I was showing her how to play golf. I won't ever do it again, Daddy. Well, you don't have to look so solemn about it. You certainly didn't do it on purpose, did you? Oh, oh, no, Daddy. 
There's nothing so terrible about breaking a window. Just an accident, that's all. Jim. Yes, Margaret? Do you feel all right, dear? <laughs> sure I feel all right. I feel fine. Why? I was just wondering. Father. Betty. <laughs> Please. But, Mother, as long as he feels that way... Jim, I told her quite definitely that it was out of the question. What is? Father, I have to have a new dress. It's for the third act of Camille, and I told the dramatic coach I would, and it's only $17, and it's just beautiful for when she dies. Who, the coach? <laughs> Father, Camille. Betty, I told you just a few minutes ago... Just a second, Margaret. If the dress is that important and uh, Betty promised, well, there's no reason why she can't get it. Father! Holy cow. Absolutely. <laughs> it's only $17. What's that? Wait till I tell Janie Liggett. Jim, are you sure you feel all right? Never felt better in my life. Margaret, do you know what I did this afternoon? No, dear, but if you want to lie down... Because... I beat Jim Hathaway. That's fine, dear. If you want to lie down for a while before dinner... Oh, it's pale green, Father, and it's just like pistachio whipped cream. Fine. Margaret, you don't understand. Jim Hathaway was a three-to-one favorite. He was even money to win the whole tournament. And I beat him. Don't you see what that means? I'm in the semifinals. Daddy! Holy cow, Dad. No kidding. Fifth! years and I finally made it. <laughs> the semifinals. With pale makeup and a soft spotlight. Oh, Father, I'm the happiest girl in the world. Yes, sir, 15 years. And that isn't the best part. Do you know who I have to play? Ed Davis. And if I can't beat him, I'll hang up my shoes. Why? What? Why will you hang up your shoes? That's uh, just an expression, Kathy. It means I'll give up. Wearing shoes? <laughs> no, Kathy, playing golf. Gosh, Dad, you might even win the cup, mightn't you? I certainly might. <laughs> Bud, you should have seen the putts I dropped today. 18 feet, 20 feet, I was the hottest thing on the golf course. If I can just keep it up for two more rounds... Jim, I don't like to interrupt, but if we're ever going to have dinner... Is it all right if I call Janie, Mother? Yes, dear. Come on, Kathy, let's go out in the backyard. I'll show you and Bud how golf should really be played. Oh, boy. I get shown first. Jim, be sure you don't wander off somewhere. We'll be right here, Margaret. I'll call you when dinner's ready. That'll be fine, honey. Say, Dad, we've been using that old five iron you gave me. Oh, wait me. a second, Bud. Say, Ed! Jim, I was just coming over to see you. Ed, did you hear what I did to Jim Hathaway? It was murder. I know. They called me from the club. Jim, I've got a terrific favor to ask of you. Okay. What's the matter with you? Oh, I, I, I've got a cold. The worst cold I've ever had my whole life. Well, Mr. Davis. Hello, Kathy. Bud. Hi. Don't get too close to me. I'm a walking gerb. <laughs> Boy, you certainly picked up a pip, Jim. Would it be all right with you if we postponed our match until Sunday? Gosh, I don't know, Ed. That's when the finals are supposed to be played. I know, Jim, but I, I'm pretty sure I could lick this cold by Sunday. Then I could play the semifinals in the morning and the finals in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, you can, can you? What happened to me? Oh, Jim, let's face it. If I can't lick you, I'll hang up my shoes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I wouldn't ask you, Jim, but this is a big thing in my life. I've been trying to reach the finals for 10 years. I've been trying for 15. Oh, Jim, let's not be ridiculous. You don't stand a chance and you do it. Oh, I don't, don't I? Oh, why, I could spot you six strokes aside and still beat you, but with this cold... Well, I... maybe I won't win. But at least I don't go around trying to build up an alibi. Beating what? Meaning I could beat you with or without a cold, and you know it. Jib, we've been friends for a long time. That's got nothing to do with it. Golf is golf. And if you can't play tomorrow, you'll forfeit the match. Oh, that's fine. That's fine after all the things I've done for you. And you're taking the wrong attitude about this whole thing. I want to beat you fair and square. Yeah. But how can I if you let a little thing like a cold get you down? A little thing? I'm so weak I could hardly see. Sure, because you aren't trying to fight it. 
Jib. When you get into the house, fix yourself a hot lemonade, take two aspirins, and then concentrate. Jib. Uh, Say to yourself, I haven't got a cold. Never had a cold. I'm too strong and healthy to get a cold. Believe me, it's all in your mind. <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Remember that guy, Koo A? Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better and better. Yeah. Whatever happened to him anyway? He died. <laughs> but, Ed, it works. I've tried it. You can talk yourself out of practically anything. Yeah, you sure can. Well, if that's the way you want it, Jim. Ed, I'm trying to help you. Okay, I'll be there at the party if they have to carry me on a stretcher. And don't forget the hot lemonade and aspirin. That'll help, too. Thanks, Jim. Every day and every way, you've been a great help. See you tomorrow. Dad, we aren't going to have much time. Oh, sure we are. Where's the ball? We don't have a ball. That's why we had to use rocks. What happened to that practice ball I gave you? You know, the uh, cotton one. It's over near the garage. Well, get it. We can't. It's stuck in back of a big log. That's right, Dad. You can't reach it unless we get the log out of the way. I've never seen a more helpless pair of kids in my life. Is uh, this it? Uh-huh. Over there, in back. But uh, I'll lift the log and you reach in for the ball. Okay, Dad. Are you ready? You bet. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. Heavy, isn't it, Daddy? Well, my hands must have slipped. Uh, let's try it again, bud. Ready? Right. One, two, three. Three. Oh! What's the matter, oh. Dad? I don't know. Something snapped, and I... Oh. Gosh. I... I can't straighten up. Daddy! Maybe your suspenders got stuck. <laughs> but I... I don't wear suspenders. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Fine son you turned out to be. I'm in mortal agony, and you have to make jokes. I wasn't making any jokes, Dad. Daddy! Oh, my back. What is it, Kathy? I know how you can fix it. You do, huh? Sure. All you have to say is, every day in every way, I'm standing upper and upper and upper. <laughs> Kathy, do you know what'll happen if I take my belt off? Uh-huh, your pants will fall down. the country, you've been seeing good news about coffee in your grocery stores. Maxwell House coffee featured at lower prices. And these days, you'll be seeing more of the same good news. Still lower prices on America's favorite brand of coffee. A welcome occasion for everybody. You, your grocer, and Maxwell House, too. Now that wonderful good-to-the-last drop flavor is yours to enjoy at the lowest prices in months. Rich, satisfying flavor you can count on cup after cup, day after day. Because with Maxwell House Coffee, we have just one aim. To bring you the most in flavor and real enjoyment every pound you buy. To bring you truly good coffee at the lowest possible price. That's why Maxwell House gives you so much more flavor for your money. Your money's worth and more in pleasure and satisfaction. And at today's prices, it's more than ever today's coffee buy. Next time you shop, look for that familiar blue Maxwell House tin in your store. Featured these days at the lowest prices in months. Start enjoying coffee that's always good to the last drop. The sands of time run slowly in the white frame house on Maple Street. An hour has passed, but not Jim Anderson's affliction. Surrounded by a solicitous family, father waits the arrival of Dr. Simmons, and sympathy flows in a steady stream through the Anderson living room, like this. Jim, I've told you repeatedly, you're not a child. You can't do things like that. Like what? All I did was try to lift the... Oh, oh, oh. It hurts, huh, Dad? <laughs> of course not. I just like to groan, that's all. <laughs> 
Betty, what's the matter with you? Nothing, Father. Then why are you staring at me? Well, it's for Camille, really. I'm doing research. What are you talking about? Oh, the play. I have to die in the third act, and you're making the most wonderful faces. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's just great. I have a broken back, and my daughter uses it for research. You know, this is the most cold-blooded family I've ever known. But, Father... Margaret, call the doctor again. Tell him it's an emergency. I did, Jim, and they said he'd be here as soon as possible. A fine doctor he turned out to be. Anytime you need him, he's out. Operating on people, delivering babies. He's never around when you need him for anything important. Uh, father, about the dress... Betty, this is hardly the time. But, Mother, I have to go to the rehearsal. Well, go ahead. Nobody's stopping you. I can't go unless you give me the $17. Then stay home. Father! Doesn't it mean anything to you that I'm practically dying? I lie here doubled up like a pretzel? Hey, you know, I didn't have any dinner. <laughs> but how can you think of food at a time like this? Well, I'm a growing boy. <laughs> we'll all have our dinner in just a little while, bud. Water bottle, Mommy. I got it as hot as I could. Oh, well, thank you, dear. You're welcome. People go around breaking windows, hitting golf balls in back of logs. Jim, let me put the hot water bottle on your back. I don't want it on my back. It hurts enough the way it is. <laughs> Gosh, Dad, how are you going to play golf tomorrow? Golf? I'll be lucky if I'm still alive. Oh, no. What is it, Jim? Ed Davis. What am I going to tell him? Well, why don't you just tell him? Margaret, I can't. He'd never believe that I hurt my back. Not after the argument we had. Daddy told him about Mr. Pooey. <laughs> Who? Every day in every way... Kathy, go to bed. <laughs> I haven't had my dinner. Then behave yourself and be quiet. Yes, Daddy. Man tries to do the right thing, the honorable thing, and what happens? Nobody believes that he... Uh, Bud. Yes, Dad? Give me a hand. I, uh, I want to get up. Okay. Jim, do you think it's wise I've got to... to call Ed Davis, Margaret. I, uh, I just thought of something. Well, can't we call him for you? No, I've got to do it myself. Jim, please be careful. I'm being careful. You don't see me leaping into the air, do you? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Grab his other arm, Betty. Father... It's only $17. Uh, when I was a boy, people were considerate. They were thoughtful and kind. Paul, will you, Betty? When mm. people were dying, they at least showed them the proper respect. They didn't follow them down to the grave, hounding them for $17. <laughs> there you are, Dad. How do you feel? Never mind how I feel. Just uh, help me over to the phone. Father... While you're standing up... Betty. <laughs> yes, Father? Go away. But, Father... I said go away. Bud and I can manage alone. Jumping creepers after I told everybody I was going to get... She wouldn't care if somebody dropped a bomb on my head, just as long as she got that idiotic dress. You want me to dial the Davises for you, Dad? Thank you very much, Bud. You've been a great help. Oh, that's okay, Dad. Say, Dad, you won't be able to use the car tonight, and I just thought... Well, uh, <laughs> stop thinking. You had the car last night, and that's enough. Here, let me have it. Holy cow. Hello? Oh, hello, Ed. This is Jim Anderson. Oh, hello, Jim. Say, I owe you an apology. Oh, that's all right, Ed. You know... I've been thinking things over, and uh, I don't see any reason why we can't postpone our match until Sunday. What for? Well, uh, I want you to be at your best, Ed, and that'll give you a chance to get over your cold. What cold? Jim, I, I don't know how to thank you. I did just what you said, and I feel like a new man. <laughs> you, uh, what? Oh, I've still got a couple of sniffles, but I feel great. You uh, do, huh? 
You certainly knew what you were talking about. Every day in every way. Hey, that's a great system. It is, huh? Yes, sir. You'll have to play some pretty sharp golf to beat me tomorrow. Say, wouldn't you like to go out to the driving range and hit a few? Uh, no thanks, Ed. I, uh, I'll just uh, take it easy tonight. Okay, pal. See you in the morning. Yes, I'll, uh, <laughs> see... See you in the morning. <laughs> every day and every way, I ought to have my brains examined. What did Mr. Davis say, Dad? He feels fine, bud, just fine. Uh, let's uh, go back to the couch. Okay. Jim, I don't understand what this is all about. If you can't play golf, why don't you tell him? Margaret, there are certain things that women just don't... Uh, let me down easy, bud. <laughs> okay, Dad. Oh! Father. Betty. You and Kathy go into the kitchen and fix your dinners. But, Mother... You've waited long enough. Now go ahead. How about me, Mom? I'm starved. You can wait a little longer, Bud. The doctor may need you. Now, Jim, will you please explain all this foolishness about Ed Davis? There's nothing foolish about it, Margaret. He said he had a cold, and I said he was trying to set up an alibi. Now, if I say I hurt my back... Two grown men acting like a couple of silly schoolboys... What's so silly about schoolboys? <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. Margaret, unless I can convince Ed Davis... But you don't have to convince him. Dr. Simmons will certainly tell him. Say, that's right. If the doc tells me I can't play, then uh, I can't play, can I? Well, it's about time. Bud, let the doctor Ooh. in like a good boy. <laughs> then can I have my dinner? We'll see, dear. Holy cow. Doctors, always rushing around, never get any place, make a big production out of everything. If I ran my business the way they do, I'd be looking for a job in a week. Jim, please don't start. Well, me. hello, Margaret. What's all the fuss about? Oh, hello, Doctor. It's about time you showed up, you old quack. So I'm finally going to get my hooks into you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Fine doctor. Listen to that bedside manner. He's going to get his hooks into me. <laughs> oh, oh. Doctor, will you need Bud for anything? Oh, I don't think so. All right, Bud, go in and have your dinner, dear. Well, good for me. You know, Margaret, I was talking to Mrs. Swain about you the other day. Really? That's right. She was telling me about that hospital service you were trying to organize last year. It's a wonderful idea. Oh, well, thank you. Doc, if you have any free time next week, Margaret, why don't you drop into my office? I may be able to help you. Oh, that would be wonderful. Doc... What's the matter with you? <laughs> Remember me? I'm the emergency. Well, I know. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing much. Just a broken back, that's all. <laughs> yes, you, you look just like a broken back. <laughs> he says it's quite painful, Doctor. Well, let's take a look at it. Turn around. I can't turn around. Oh, stop acting like a jackass. Turn around. <laughs> Calls himself a doctor. If I didn't like his sister, I wouldn't even let him in the house. Hmm. <laughs> Is that where it hurts? <laughs> you know darn well that's where it hurts. Well, hold still for a second. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Never mind what I'm going to do. Just hold still. Ow! <laughs> Okay, now go to bed and put some heat on it. <sighs> Was it anything serious, Doctor? No, of course not. You know, Margaret, we've needed a volunteer service at the hospital for years. <laughs> and if you can just get it started... Say, Doc, I'm talking to Margaret. Well, I hate to interrupt anything so vital, but uh, what else do I do? I just told you, go to bed and put heat on your back. Is that all? Well, I can send a nurse around to hold your hand, if that's what you want. <laughs> You mean it, uh, it wasn't serious? It was a simple dislocation. And if you'd remember that you were 40 instead of four, it wouldn't happen. Gosh, I can stand out. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Only 40 years old, and he can stand up. <laughs> Please be 
be careful. Oh, he's all right, Margaret. In the morning, you'll never know there's anything wrong with him. Is that so? I'm as weak as a cat, and you know it. Well, it may take a few days, but you'll be all right. In the meantime, uh, I'd better stay in bed, huh? No, I wouldn't do that, Jim. If you let that spine stiffen up, you're liable to run into trouble. I'd prescribe some light exercise. Of course, you won't do so well, but uh, why don't you go over to the club in the morning and play a little golf? Oh, no! <laughs> It's been such welcome news to see lower prices on Maxwell House coffee in the stores. And now that news is even better. These days, grocers everywhere are featuring Maxwell House at lower prices still. Now you folks who always drink Maxwell House can enjoy it at the lowest prices in months. And you folks who haven't been getting that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor, now's the time to bring home a familiar blue Maxwell House tin. See how much more pleasure you find in a cup of coffee when it holds the world's most famous flavor. Flavor so rich and mellow. Flavor you can count on. Because we'll never compromise on the quality of a single pound. For wonderfully good coffee. For today's coffee buy. Look for Maxwell House. Featured these days at still lower prices. The lowest prices in months. It's always good to the last drop. It's morning now, and in the white frame house on Maple Street, there's a heavy blanket of gloom in the master bedroom. This is one morning when the master feels anything but masterful, like this. Dr. Simmons probably took his training in a school for feeble-minded veterinarians. Jim, I think you're being very foolish about this whole thing. You can't even put on your sweater alone, and how can you play golf? I don't know, but I'm going to try. Nobody's going to say I gave up without a fight. Jim. If he'd only told me to stay in bed for a few days, or just one day, I could have asked the rules committee for a postponement. That's all I need. I'll be fine tomorrow. Jim Anderson, if you don't call Ed Davis this very instant... Wait a minute. If you'll just explain Margaret, to him... Margaret, listen. What? Oh, honey. Have you ever heard anything more beautiful in all your life? Jim, what is it? It's raining! <laughs> Did you know, now there's an instant coffee with roaster fresh, pure coffee flavor. It's Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor, the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful good to the last drop flavor, combined with the convenience of thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. Unlike most instant coffees, it's all rich, pure coffee, nothing added. Tomorrow, try the instant coffee with a famous flavor, Instant Maxwell House, instantly good to the last drop. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Don't forget, membership cards for the Robert Young Good Drivers Club are waiting for you at your local NBC station. Get a man-to-man or dad-to-daughter pledge and sign up today. Be a good driver. Get your membership card in the Robert Young Good Drivers Club today. Now, until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for the Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Stay tuned for Mad for Music, starring Joan Evans on NBC. NBC.